Yes, next news out of Baghdad. U.S. airstrike kills top Iranian, Iranian general Soleimani at Baghdad airport. Um, okay, so the United States killed a high-profile commander um, of Iran's secret, is it Quds Force? Armin? Oh, Quds. Quds Force, okay, uh, with a drone strike in Iraq early on Friday, and they killed um, a high commander, Soleimani, Qas Qasim Soleimani. Qasim Soleimani, um, yeah. Thank you. At the direction of the president, the U.S. military has taken de decisive defensive action to protect the U.S. personnel abroad, said uh, in a statement announcing the death of Soleimani, the commander of Iranians' military forces in Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Armin, well, I know that you're probably dying to, to tell us more about this. Tell well, us, tell you, us what you said. Uh, you asked something, but before we went live, I think I, because I have, I don't know where to start with this because there's so many moving parts to the story. So maybe we'll just start with your question, and I'll, maybe that would be a good way to give us that. I mean, uh, we we got a oh. super chat from Angel Rose. Thank you, Angel. and thank you, Angel, for congratulating me as well. Thank you, Joe. You're very sweet. Thank you, Angel. Oh, that's so, so sweet, Shubham. Uh, Armin, Armin and I have been <laughs> discussing this for the, the greater part of a year now, uh, and we're, we're still in separate camps. But what I asked you before the show, Armin, was do you think this was part of Trump's plan to start war with Iran? Uh, no. Uh, but you think it is? You, yes. Yeah, okay. So we yes, I thoroughly think it is. And I thoroughly think it is because I want to add some more context to this news uh, that's been coming up lately. Um, it, back in 2013, President Trump accused pre uh, President, then he wasn't President Trump, but Trump accused President Obama of wanting to start war with Iran. Um, and he said several tweets in several tweets that he was trying to start the war so that he could win the re-election. Hmm. Uh, mark my words, we're going to war with Iran. He's going to start the war with Iran so he can win the re-election. And I feel like we're here. And I feel like I've been saying this for a year, hmm. seeing these tweets come out. Um, some more news that, that I definitely am not trying to say this is why, you know, Trump Trump killed Soleimani, but some news that just came out from Washington Post was that Soleimani and Trump have been quarreling on Twitter and Instagram uh, since 2018. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, this is uh, this could be on for a while. I mean, yeah. for, I, first of all, about the news about the um, so Qasem Soleimani is the head of the Quds Force, which is part of the um, the the most famous part of the IRGC. I don't know how to tell people how important this guy was, right? Um, this is after Khamenei, which is the religious leader, supreme religious leader in Iran. This guy was the, mo was the most influential person in the entire country, okay? And I know some people might disagree, but some people argue that as well. Like, people might think like, oh, the president will obviously after the supreme leader, the president is the most important guy. No, the president is just a pawn. This guy, um, has more influence over Iran's uh, foreign policy um, and a lot of other things. Um, so it, he was the supreme leader sword, but he was also not just an executor, he was a planner. Uh, he was turned into a national figure and among Iranians themselves, he was either loved or hated. And there's no middle ground, there's not that many people that were in the middle, right? Uh, and whether, you know, what percentage of the Iranian people absolutely adored him and what percentage of Iranian people absolutely hated him, uh, there's no way, anybody that tells you, oh, wh wh which side is more, or these are the st their statistics, they're talking out of their you-know-what because there is no reliable statistics on this. So don't let anybody speak for the Iranian people on their behalf because nobody n has reliable numbers on these, right? Uh, but this this is taking out this guy is not just like taking out like yet yeah, people say this is the top general but he was way more than this the top general like I don't know how, there's very it's really hard to understand how significant this is this is the killing of this guy is way more significant than killing bin Laden or Baghdadi okay uh, when bin Laden was killed al-Qaeda was at its weakest point, okay? When Baghdadi was killed, ISIS 
was at its weakest point. Like maybe with I uh, with uh, sorry, with when Os Bin Laden was co uh, killed, Al Qaeda was weaker than many years before it, and when Baghdadi was killed, ISIS was weaker than many than many years before it, than the years before it. But and the difference is that this guy is like a part of a like a head figure in a country, in an official recognized country. Okay, those uh, Bin Laden and Baghdadi, they were just part of a terrorist group. I mean, arguably this guy was also terrorist, but this is a terror. Like this guy is a statesman, right? Like this is a general of a of an um, of a country, right? Uh, so it's very different. Is technically going to war with the country, like maybe not in direct war, but it's it's, a, it's kind of a declaration of a war. But and also the IRGC, which is Iran's uh, more religious military compared to Ar Artesh, um, which is another branch of the Iran's military, um, it's not at its weakest point. This Iran's military and influence in the region, it's as its strongest has ever been since the past 40 years right so this is as a, like you're going out and taking a leader of a movement this is not just a country this is spreading the shia the 12 shia velayat al faqih version of islam um as an as a shia crescent as a shia empire not just in iran but beyond iran's border what they call it in iran is exporting the islamic revolution to Lebanon, to Iraq, to Syria, to Bahrain, uh, to Yemen. Um, this basically Iran is trying to create a Shia empire in that region. And this guy was the head of doing that, right? This guy was, um, I don't know, what uh, Pompeo and Bolton and the head of the CIA and all of those combined in one person, like that whole spreading of the Shia Empire in the Middle East this is this guy was it okay this guy had defeated more ISIS mem killed more ISIS members and defeated many more battles and stopped the Kurds from getting independence in Iraq and his his param his um, proxy groups have killed so many Sunni civilians like this guy is responsible for so much taking this guy out is an absolute game changer in the whole region okay um so the thing is though yes this might escalate things to to a situation like that we we can't i don't even know like pe people that are predicting what's going to happen next they're also ta talking out of their you know what because it's really hard to predict right now there's too many moving parts the common consensus seems to be that Iran will answer, but what that answer is going to be like is anybody's guess. But the thing is that the answer that comes from Iran, I shouldn't say Iran, I should say every time I say Iran, some people are like, look, this is the Islamic Republic, don't put the Iranian people in the same group as their government. So I have to say Islamic Republic, I shouldn't say Iran. So the way that Islamic Republic will retaliate is anyone's guess. But we have to understand where this started. The reason why I say that this might not be the reason what to start a war is because you have to just say, I don't know, it was last week? I think it was last week. Um, so Iran and, b before I tell you about what happened last week, Iran and United States have been, you know, bothering each other in, um, after, the, you know, when, when ISIS was in power, Iran and United States were working to, with each other. Like, not directly, but they kind of had, like, a, an understanding that they're both there to defeat ISIS, right? But the more ISIS got weaker and weaker, then they re now it was that now both of them were uh, trying to gain more influence in Syria and Iraq. And now they were competitors in that area, and they started taking more positions against each other. They always took positions against each other, but it became stronger and stronger, especially after the nuclear deal was scrapped by Trump. Everything got more hostile, but they never got into conflict with each other directly, right? Iran always used its proxies to attack um, United States interests around the area. And the understanding was that the 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 hidden understanding was that United States will not go to conflict with Iran as long as it's 
not I- Iran itself, as long as it's Iranian proxies in the region, right? Because neither Iran or United States want to, neither Islamic Republic or the U.S. government want to go to a direct war with each other, right? But they also don't want to let, let each other get away with stuff. So the the Iranian, uh, the Islamic Republic's understanding was that, okay, we use our proxies and the United States is not going to come to war with us and they use their whatever their, their resources they have and we'll just get away with this. They, they both didn't want to drag each other into an all-out war. But what, so, but what happened if, last week was a contractor uh, as, uh, of United States, a, a citizen of United States that was a contractor in the area was killed by one of the proxies, uh, proxy groups of Iran. Um, I, sorry, but uh, I shouldn't say Iran, but uh, of, of the Islamic Republic. And the United States responded to that by taking out a whole bunch of leaders of another proxy group um, of Iran in the region, in, right? And then the Islamic Republic of Iran responded by the, to that by something that escalated things to the whole new level. Okay, this is this was a whole new level of escalation by the Islamic Republic by Iran's the Islamic Republic's proxy group went and surrounded and almost took over the United States embassy in Baghdad, and this was. Again, it's hard to understand, underestimate how significant this is. You have to understand, United States embassy in any country is part of U.S. soil, right? And the Baghdad embassy, U.S. embassy, is one of the most secured embassies in the world. No, it's not one of the most. It is the most secured embassy in the world, even among UN, United States embassies. This was the most secure, but it was mostly security by by uh, Iraqi personnel. But when when Iranian proxy, uh, when Islamic Republic's proxy groups went in to protest the killing of these eight of these leaders, the whole the all the security was just letting him in, which really showed how much control the Iranian government has over the Iraqi government. Like a lot of times we said this, but people thought we were exaggerating how much the influence is. But the fact that these people just walked in, I can tell you like a fly, the, the level of security there is so high, nothing could get in and out. Like this, this was insane. Like y- y- United States like uh, personnel like the, uh, that worked in the embassy, they probably felt more safe in Baghdad, in Iraq, than back home in Washington. That's how, how secure it was. But all of a sudden, one day, all the security is like just door open. All of these people protesters working like them. You know how terrifying that is for the people that are working there. That just they felt like they had absolute security, and all of a sudden they see these people right at the other side of a glass. It was one, at one point that the only thing separating them was a glass. So that's how crazy it was. And this. You know, I criticize Trump as much as everybody. I don't like Trump, okay? But this could not have gone unanswered. Honestly, the fact that the Islamic Republic of Iran has done so many, has taken so many, made so many moves against um, United States interests around the area, and the fact that they have, a lot of them have went unanswered, um, made United States look very weak. Right. And uh, the Iranian government boasted about that. Like, look, these people won't do anything because they can't do anything. Right. Um, And if this last one, if going and attacking the embassy, if this was went unanswered, it would have looked really, really weak. Right. So it's really easy right now to criticize. Again, I think. I criticize Trump for a lot of other things, but this was a very difficult decision because if you answer, it has to be a strong answer because your embassy was attacked. Okay, this was very much like what happened 40 years. Like it, remi- it wasn't. It's not much like that, but it reminded people of what happened to United States embassy in Tehran 40 years ago, right after the Islamic Revolution. And also it reminded more pe- people that don't know much about that. It reminded a lot of people about what happened to the United States embassy in Libya, right? And how much also Trump criticized Clinton for letting the uh, 
for for letting an embassy be unprotected. So, and it needed the need the answer had to be strong, but the answer couldn't be too strong. It couldn't be a, a t- full-on attack because that would escalate things to a war. But it they had to, it's hard to find the balance. Had, they had to find something that really really hurts, but doesn't hurt enough to make force the Islamic Republic of Iran's hands to go into a war, right? And finding that balance is really difficult, right? So again, well, Ali said like, oh, Trump did this to go to war. Honestly, attacking the embassy was all the excuse that you need to go to war with Iran. That's all the excuse. You could be like, if Trump really wanted an excuse to go to war with Iran, you could be like, look, they attacked our, they attacked our embassy. What the hell do you want, right? They could be like, we could attack them tomorrow now, right? But again, Trump has a problem with his base. Don't want him to go to war. He's not going to get reelected if he goes to war. His base is different from other Republican bases. But his base also, and uh, the other half of his base, don't want him to look like he just takes it. Just Iran's could be like Iran's government could just go like like oh we attacked your embassy we took out this ship we did this we did that and like yeah nothing happens right so he he needed to have like a strong answer but not strong enough to go out like not a direct attack again this was not an attack on Iranian soil Soleimani was in Baghdad but this could still backfire on Trump because even though they, this was a hard decision. A lot of his own base hates hates the fact that he did this. They think that this is too much intervention, right? So this is might backfire on Trump. It might not backfire on Trump, right? Another way that this could back Trump backfire on Trump is that this could really let the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Iranian government. Again, I'm just not trying to trying to not just say Iran because I'm not trying to just include all the people. Uh, the Islamic Republic might be able to now force the hand of the Iraqi government to remove any remaining permission of US for uh, of U- US influence in Iraq right so remember again this was a, uh, I, again i have a lot of criticism against obama but one unfair unfair criticism against obama was that oh he uh, he just left iraq well when when the Iranian government convinced the Iraqi government to remove the permission uh, from Obama to stay in Iraq, Obama didn't have any choice, right, but to leave Iraq. And again, now, with this, because this attack was not just on Soleimani, he was with Iraqi citizens. Iraqi citizens were taken out. Iraqi citizens were killed without, by U.S. forces in Iraq without the permission of Iraqi government, which is supposed with which they pretend that it's their ally, right? Which is Iraqi government. It's not an ally of the United States. It's, a, it's an ally of the Iranian government, right? So this these attacks on Iraqi citizens might be able might may, give the advantage to the Iranian government to convince the Iraqi government to remove any remaining uh, influences that the United States has in Iraq and basically open the entire door for Iran's government to make Iraq their own playground, right? So one, the interesting thing is that in this conversation, sorry, I'm gonna end this very fast, uh, I've gone to full before, is that one missing piece of this conversation that everybody keeps ignoring is the Iraqi people. Like this, we're talking about all of this is happening in Iraq, and but it's happening between Iran's government and US government, and they just have made, uh, Iraq, their che- you know their uh, chessboard, without any say <laughs> of the Iraqi people. Like Iraqi people, like some of them do, and more of them should be like, this is not get out, both of you <laughs> get out of here. Like what the hell is happening? This is our country. Like um, it's very interesting because we have all kinds of Iraqi people. We have Iraqi people that are uh, support Iran. Uh, Iran's government uh, are against the U.S. government. We have Iraqi people that support U.S. government. Ag- they're against Iranian influence. And we have Iraqi people that are saying, both of you, get out of here. Like, this is why, why is our politics 
why are, are the people that rule over us are being chosen by United States officials and Iranian officials? And why don't we have more of a say on who's running our country? Which I think those uh, those are the more, more of the people that um, are those are the people that have should have more of a say. Anyway, sorry, I went for too long. I have a lot more to say. I'm gonna. Uh, I am going to have another show completely dedicated to this topic with Ali Rizwi on the Secular Jihadist podcast. So just look up. Sec uh, I think it's going to be on Wednesday. Um, so just look up Secular Jihadist podcast. We're going to have a live show there that's going to be completely dedicated to this. Uh, David in the live chat is saying this attack is a violation of Iraqi sovereignty. Uh, well, we don't know the. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is uh, legal. Legally, um, we don't know what the fine print is with regards to what permissions the U.S. military has in Iraq. But uh, technically, yes, it is. David is saying retribution is the only natural reaction. Well, see, both again, both United States government and Iran's government are stuck in this they're stuck in a game that they both want to get out of but they both can't get out of because if some if you know united states reacted to something that the, the iranian proxy groups did because they couldn't just let go and now the iranian government had to react to that because if they didn't react they're going to look weak but they were they didn't they want to escalate things a little bit but not so much that the other one the other side will go out attack them fully but they but then the other side reacts to this a little bit more so that they don't look weak. But they're both hoping that the next time they react, the other guy quits because they don't, both sides don't want this to escalate to a full out war. So both sides, every time they re react, they have, they feel like they're forced to react because they don't want to look weak. But they're also hoping like, can we just like end it here? But they can't say that, you know what I mean? Um, David saying, imagine if the Iraqi government conducted a target killings of Blackwater contractors in the U.S., how would the U.S. respond? Um, yeah, but again, this was a response to something else. Again, this was a response to something that, again, it's more complicated than that. But I'm not going to continue because it's going to get this section is going to get too long. I have a lot more to say though. But anyways, Ali, what do you think? Yeah. Um, do you have any questions on this, or should I? <coughs> Shopam, do you have any questions or comments? On well, I just, oh, well, I want to make a small comment, and I'm not going to drag it out very long. It's like you said, we've already spent a lot of time on this. But one, I hope that you're right. Um, I hope that he doesn't want to go to war here. But with Iran now saying they will retaliate, um, also with them declining uh, an inspection of their nuclear facilities recently as well, um, and other things, it it's you know it puts us in a very uncertain spot. I also personally have not seen Trump's base uh, be against what just happened today uh, or him wanting to go to war. So I definitely don't want to fall into the fallacy of what we were talking about earlier. All I see is this, therefore this is true. Um, so I, I would I would love to see, you know, some of his base fighting hard against this. Well, well, there's multiple, there's many reactions right now, right? Some people are saying this was the right decision. If uh, Trump is not going to take us to an all out war, this was like a tactical uh, killing of just one person. Like, it's a good way to, because it's a very strong response without actually going to war. So they're like, this was the best response. Some people are, but some of them are like, why are we even, some of his base are saying, why are we still even there? Are we supposed we shouldn't it wasn't the promise that we we're going to leave? I've seen that, uh, so there's mixed reactions to this. But right, both, and not only that, we just sent in thousands of troops um, right to the area. So, so, but but yeah, but both sides, whether the ones that are against this action uh, and the ones that are f supporting this action, think that this is not going to. They're they're saying that this is not going to turn into a war, right? That's what their opinion is, right? So that means that if it that they don't want Trump to take them to a war, right? Um, again, I remind people that when, when Trump decided to actually uh, bomb uh, Assad's um, bases, like some Assad, uh, assets in Syria, in response to, uh, you know, one of um, Assad's, you know, gassing of his own people at one point, um, his that was the time that it, I saw the vast majority of his base just turned on him. 
that they said Trump did, like they said this was the wrong decision, right? So his base is a very is is a, again I'm not saying that his base is right or wrong to support Trump, but his Trump's base is against intervention, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, from all the stuff that Trump has done wrong, this was a more co complicated one because I I think yeah, yeah so. I mean, there are more simple things to be anti-Trump for, especially for his support of Saudi Arabia oh, for, for, sure. for for killing c civilians in Yemen and causing the world's greatest humanitarian crisis uh, uh, of our time. That's right. from, that is an easy thing to point to to be anti-Trump. This was a this was a more complicated thing. Like if you were a leader of a country and your embassy was attacked, uh, and you just be like, uh, okay. That would be that would be also I, that would also be weird. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.